Hey everybody, welcome to my workshop. It is a holiday weekend and this is one of them weird episodes. So we're going to start off this weird episode by giving a shout out to the Long Beach Dirtbags, a great baseball team. Go Dirtbags! Now before we get going any further, always remember at the end of the video is my email address. If you want to get a hold of me, write me an email. The subscribe button is in the middle. I appreciate your subscriptions. You get notified immediately when I release a video. And then there's playlists. This is the second installment of how not to build a cigar box guitar. This is one of those episodes in which we build a guitar but not out of a cigar box. I had someone ask me, why do you name all your videos how to build a cigar box guitar and then what the episode is about. Um, hey, guys, how do you think you found me? When you searched for how to build a cigar box guitar, isn't that what you wrote in <laughs> to Google or typed into Google? How to build a cigar box guitar. So if I say that in my title, guess what? It helps you find me. If you don't want to find me, then delete me and don't subscribe. But for those of you that do, that's why I do it. If you see an episode called How Not to Build a Cigar Box Guitar, that means we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Now, you might remember in the episode Neck Scarf Joint, we built this neck. We showed you how to do this. Uh, and we're going to use this neck now. And we're going to build... That's right, a coffee can guitar, a three string coffee can guitar. Where's the inspiration for this come from? Up here is an I card popping up right now. Luther Dickinson of the North Mississippi All Stars has a guitar made out of a coffee can. He, it's a two string, he plays it, he yells into it, he uses it a microphone. Uh, it's a cool instrument and right up there with that eye card popping up is luther dickinson playing a song called high water on his coffee can guitar so have a look at that we're going to hit the bench and get to work now okay we're going to start this project by doing some work on the neck um we have to cut out the headstock put in tuners it's going to be a three string and then we're going to put on the fretboard um glue it down fret it now I'm going to use one of uh, these pickups, it's a coil, um, and we used one in the two-string diddly boat in the episode called Front Porch Trained. That's going to sit down into the neck, uh, and I'm actually going to use a remnant of one of these bridges uh, to mount this like so. And then we're going to use our standard floating bridge to go onto the can. The neck is going to go through the can and end right about here. Uh, we're going to put another uh, piece of board to strengthen the neck up here. Uh, there's going to be a, a piezo as well, the typical two pickups, and I'll have my controls on the side of the can. For the body of the guitar, we're going to use this U-Band coffee can. It's an old one. Uh, we're going to uh, flip it over, and we are going to mount the neck uh, through a couple of holes here. All right, I've taken this blue painter's tape and I've marked off on the can where the neck is going to go through. Uh, I laid the neck on top of the can up here and then marked that off and ran those lines down. I got a couple marks here that I'm going to use to drill the corners out so I can nip this uh, metal out here. And then um, I'm going to recess the neck a little bit uh, where the can sits down into it. And I'll do that with a router on the neck. Uh, but there's going to be a double board here to make this stronger. So um, we'll drill some holes here and get this cut out. So I'm going to take my awl here and pop a couple little starter holes here. You want to remember when you're working with one of these cans with the bottom cut out, it's going to be really easy to crush the sides. So you want to think about that when you're deciding where to mount your uh, electronics and stuff. So I'm just going to 
drill through there like that and then I'll go to each one and then I'll use a bigger bit so I can get my cutters down in there to cut all this out. Okay, I've got both uh, sides of the can cut out. Uh, this one is going to take a little bit of grinding uh, or filing, so I'll get these edges nice. Um, we want to make sure that uh, there's nothing sharp there to cut anybody on. Um, but what happens here is this neck goes all the way through the can like this. Okay, one of the last things I want to do in my basic layout here is I know that the fingerboard, this is just sitting here loose right now, but I know that the fingerboard is going to uh, line up with where the neck drops down. So the end of that fingerboard is going to be right there. This fingerboard has a notch for the nut right there. I know that this uh, scale on this thing is going to be 25 and a half inches. So I need 25 and a half inches from the middle of the nut there where the strings are going to come across it all the way down here I need to know where 25 and a half is and it's right there so I'm gonna put a mark on my can and I know that my bridge is gonna be there so now I can figure out uh, like I said I've already marked uh, the the radius off here I know the fingerboard is gonna come up here and I know that I'm gonna use my tension pin set up back here for the string so I know how uh, long this will have to be sticking out of the can uh, and then I'm gonna have to adjust my pockets down here once I get the neck set up to put another piece of wood right here I'm gonna put another piece of wood in this area up to about here because um, that coil is gonna sit across here and be a little bit wider now I've marked off on the end of the fingerboard the radius of the can and remember I want to cut out uh, this section right here for the coil pickup uh, but I'm going to start off by doing uh, this rounded part on this drum sander it's going to be real easy to do it with a wheel all right that matches the radius of the can nice now before I start gluing stuff uh, down on the uh, neck, starting with the fingerboard, I want to remember that I want to put this pickup, which has this wood cover, remember that episode we did called Front Porch Train with the two string diddly bow. I'm going to recess that down into this right here. Um, and so I'm actually going to cut the fingerboard uh, right here and take this section out of it. And then we'll put this, this will sit on the neck, and then I'm going to use one of these leftover bottom of the bridge things from a floating bridge, and we'll drill down through there and cut that off. And this will actually clamp around the neck part, uh, but this will be recessed into the fingerboard. So I'm going to take this chop saw and cut these two sections off. I want to do the smallest section first. Of course I got a laser here to show me that my line is straight. There we go. So when I glue this on to the neck, I'm basically going to have that gap and then the part that's radius to the can will sit like that. A little trick I want to show you here. All this fine sawdust that's coming off the chop saw, if I put some of this away into a tin, uh, when the day comes where I've got a gap, say, uh, between... Uh, my fingerboard my neck that I need to level out or something when I put my glue on the neck I can just take a little bit of this and mix it in with the glue and If I've got a little gap, it'll solve that problem for me. So I always have a little tin of this fine shavings around So before I glue down uh, my fingerboard onto the neck 
uh, like so. I'm going to want to take uh, and take these wings off of here and cut this radius into here. And also, I'm going to cut a little bit of a design into the top of the neck. So I'm going to clamp this down on uh, to my bench top here and do all that with a jigsaw. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Okay, I'm taking this flat saw and cutting along the neck board using it as, as a guide. I've taken a jigsaw and cut this where I want to radius this out a little bit. Uh, and I'm finishing this cut here like so. And then once I'm all done, I'll take this off to the drum sander on the drill press and get all this smoothed out. Alright, there we go. Uh, I've done what I need to do with the neck pretty much. Got a nice little pattern up on the top and the neck is radius where the fingerboard comes in. Okay, I've taken a second piece of wood and put a 45 on it. It'll end up being underneath uh, the neck board down closer to the can. Um, I've taken my piece out of the uh, fingerboard uh, where this will fit on. And then I've got the piece after that that meets the radius of the, the can. Um, so it's time to glue the fingerboard on to the neck. And I'm going to use tight bond as always. And then we'll set this in place and clamp it up and let it dry thoroughly. Again, if I get a, a low spot or something uh, on the neck, and I'm looking at, I got to get a little gap. I can do a little bit of this and fill any gaps under the fingerboard so everything's nice. We want our fingerboard to be nice and uh, flat so we don't have any problems when it's fretted up later. But it'll sit like that. All right, we are glued up on the fingerboard and let this sit overnight. Okay, so here is that coil pick I'm, pickup I'm going to use. I've got the neck glued up. Um, what I've done is I've marked off where this will sit at the end of the fingerboard. i got a mark there. And then this part that we radiused a bit earlier that will match up with the can top is right there. Now I'm going to want to sink this down just a tad because the strings will come up over the top of this. Um, I want it close but not too close. And then when you put this in, you can see that this sticks up a bit out of the bottom. I like this uh, pickup because it's a low profile pickup. But anyway, what I've done is I've measured that distance with uh, this and found the depth of it. And then I've marked that where that coil uh, part of it's going to sit in between the cover like so. And I've marked that off and then use this to put my marks of how deep I'm going to have to cut this out. Now the plan is I use floating bridges. I've, I've got an episode called floating bridge that there will be an eye card on. But anyway, um, I take these off, which leaves me all these pieces. So what I'm going to do is this fits the neck here, see, like so. I'm going to put it underneath and then cut the ends off and then put this here and run my bolts through once this is down and that'll support this really well so it's not just hanging off there so I'm going to cut this with the flat saw and then chisel it out and make it level sit down in there. The cover will go over it like so. The rest of the fingerboard will sit right there with the can radius and then this will come up 
from the bottom after we've cut those ends off and we'll use bolts, small bolts with nylon insert washers to keep that and then when everything tightens up this will be good and solid we'll hide these wires back in here and everything will be good now using that uh, coil covers guide we're gonna put that last bit of fingerboard on right there like so and put a clamp on this and leave it on overnight like I, I've said in other videos you got to watch it because this glue wants to shift cause your work to shift sometimes there we go perfect okay we're going to cut a slot in here to make sure that this is flush with this before we glue the underneath board that goes through the can and supports it starting just past where the uh, neck enters into the can so I've made these little cuts like this and now I can just pop these like so and I'll take a file and make sure everything's right there we go uh, that will support the coil and then the other board will glue through about here and it will actually be over the top of this everything will be nice and strong okay so we've got that notch cut out on the bottom that sits in there flush like so I've cut a board that goes from where the tail piece is going to end up through underneath the last two frets. So I'm going to set this in here like so and then line the boards up and clamp it down and let that dry. And this will pull up into the coil to mount it and this will be firm and solid because of this board underneath okay we're gonna cut uh, the neck board off here that'll be the tail piece we're gonna put our tension pins in there that board goes underneath uh, this remnant of the floating bridge is underneath here the coil will mount here with its cover and we've got that glued up where it ends right there and everything will come out of the can about right there on the top of the can this is actually the spot where the key was that you would open up these old cans with when was the last time you saw one of those anyway the top of this can is pretty rough it's got a couple dents in in it which would create for some ev unevenness so what i've done is i i took a piece of leftover uh, cigar box bottom and uh, drew a circle on it that matches uh, the size of this and then I cut this out and I took a belt sander and went around and uh, got rid of all the marks and I found the center of it and where the um, floating bridge is going to sit like so and then I put I'll put that there and when I bolt the neck down like we always do we run the bolts through the neck you can see that I've recess the neck a little bit where the can sits down into it and then I'll do some work on this there's a bunch of this has got to come off and it will sit up here and then we'll mount everything to this top board the strings will hold it down now I'm pulling this out of here of course I've got some work to do on the can before it's wrapped up but I'm going to show you here before I start fretting the neck that I cut uh, a bit of the neck out to recess uh, for the can to sit down into that'll make my string height better and then while this is here you can see that I notched this out for this upside down floating bridge part that I'm going to use to hold the coil on and then there's another board here uh, underneath to make this all solid because with just that amount of neck uh, when you tighten up the strings that would have created a problem but 
and so anyway that's what that looks like that'll be inside the can most of this and you won't be able to see it so we're going to get on fretting the neck now i'm going to be using medium high nickel silver fret wire um i like to use this size on a cigar box guitars it's not so fine that it's unforgivable uh it gets the strings up a little bit off uh of the fretboard which works out for me now there are uh six feet uh in this package of medium high nickel silver fret wire once again write that down um it's cut into eight inch pieces and it's my experience that on a 25 and a half scale neck you can get two necks out of one of these packages so i did a an episode on fretting the neck um and i'll give you an eye card to that but this is just tapping these in like so and nipping the ends off and doing some filing i'll show you what it looks like when it's all done all right the fretting is done we are going to uh, put a coffee related headstock graphic on and also some coffee related matchbooks before we do the headstock graphic we're going to get the tuner holes ready and i've done that by starting with a pilot hole so when i drill these i don't bug out either the top or the bottom we're going to use uh, these tuners and they call for a smaller hole on the back and one uh, on the front that's just a tad bigger to hold uh, the retainer that fits over this there we go perfect now i'm wrapping up a concoction here of about a quarter cup of coffee uh, that's been boiled down to get real thick and we put a secret ingredient that um, pulls the parts of plant derived substances part and since this guitar is about coffee I'm going to stain the wood with this coffee based stain like so okay guys let's pick up the pace here because a lot of the stuff we're going to do now you've seen in previous videos and i'll give you links and i cards to those videos up in the top corner there okay we are drilling now the through bolts that go through this cover up here that were made for the top of the can drilling those there now and these will bolt through the neck with and be held by nuts next we're drilling the pilot holes for the tension pins uh, that will hold the strings and they'll have that uh, ball canning lid cover and copper tape as we saw in the grounding the strings video okay we're drilling the pilot holes now for uh, our floating bridge which will sit there and we're going to pull these off of here as usual and drill a little bit bigger hole and put those there so this is typical to our uh what we saw in that episode floating bridge we're going to work this floating bridge down some on the belt sander uh by taking some off right here and then adjusting the belt over on the side where we can 
knock this down accordingly as well. You see how that works? Okay, so we are matchbooking the neck now. And um, getting these matchbooks cut and lined up. I did a I did an episode called Graphics that shows you how to do this. But I'll get this done and show you what it looks like. And the neck is matchbooked. Okay, I'm putting fret markers in at the 3rd, 5th, 7th, and 12th fret. I'm using this flexible rod. I've drilled a 5 16 hole right there. This is just big enough to push this down in firmly. And I'm just going to take my flush saw, cut it off like so, and boom. And we're doing the last of the tuner mount holes here. Now with those done we can put the finish on the back of the, the neck. Now I said a little bit earlier that I'm using my coffee stain uh, in a rag just like so and I'm just going over the wood several times and it gives it a nice color. Again, this is just a quarter cup of coffee grounds boiled down in a small amount of water with a tinge of alcohol in it to help break down the coffee grounds. And it gives you a nice look. Alright, we're doing a 1936 Buffalo Head Nickel in the underside of the neck right below the 12th fret. I like the year 1936 for a number of reasons. I had a 1936 Ford panel wagon once and 1936 is the year that Lucia Smith and Sid Hemphill teamed up with Sun House. So we'll let that dry right there. Again Duco Cement is your friend. So we put the base coat on to put the neck graphic on. Now uh, after we've poked a hole in from the bottom and found where the tuner holes are, we're going to do a couple coats of Mod Podge over the top. Again my graphics video, the episode called Graphics tells you exactly how to do this including how to do the graphics on a computer. So we'll put a couple coats on this like so and then put the tuners on. Now once these coats dry what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and you can see there's a little bit of trim work to do here and I'll do that with a razor knife but I find that that's a lot easier to do once you've got a couple coats of Mod Podge on it and it's dried. Alright I like those tuners and I think that turned out pretty nice. A couple things I want to show you about the pickups. Uh, first the piezo is going to go uh, in this indented part so when the top of the this wood that I've made for the top will sit over this it will still allow that piezo to sit down in this area. Now I want you to see that I've taken a piece of shrink wrap a long piece and covered this because this wire goes through the top of the can it will the piezo will be there and I'll hot glue gun this down so it will be right under the bridge um, like so. I've also put a piece of on the coil a piece of shrink wrap so when it comes off the neck like so and into the can uh, this will be covered these wires are kind of thin and we don't want those exposed okay you can see here that uh, the, the shrink wrap that I put here protects the leads off of the piezo going down into the side of the hole from getting caught and worn um, the holes for 
that hold the neck on a line up here and this will be right under the floating bridge right here so I've taken a little bit of hot glue and set this in place and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the whole thing is coated really well so the leads don't ever move you see I'm just coating this whole thing with hot glue and now I'm going to put some spit on the finger and mash this down like so and then put this over the top and make sure everything fits there we go that's going to give me some nice sound out of that piezo okay to mount this coil pickup I've a hot glue gunned it uh, to the cover so it won't come undone I've also taken the hot glue and stabilized where it comes out I've put shrink wrap on here I've used nylon insert nuts so this won't come undone and then finally to keep the cable stabilized I've taken a piece of canning jar lid drilled two holes in it pre drilled holes in the side of the neck and now that will keep this wire from flopping around it will go into the can right here and hook up to the volume control and ultimately the jack and sometimes when you're piecing these things together you do things that later you wish you hadn't and one of the things I'm using care uh, to pay attention to here is when I'm putting things on like uh, my volume controls and my jack uh, yeah, I'm using a different kind of jack because this isn't a big thick Camacho box. This is just a little thin uh, sided can. But anyway, the natural tendency of this uh, setup here, if you lay it down, is it's going to seek because the neck is running through and it's round. It's always going to want to balance right here. So if you put your stuff right on the side of the can, it's going to end up getting knocked off. So what I've done is my pickups at the bottom uh, side of the can uh, are, are going to be off center from here and then the same thing with my volume controls so I've drilled a, a pilot hole right here and now the bit that's big enough to drill my hole for my volume control and you can see that that's plenty off the side of the can and I'm going to do the same thing over here. There we go. Uh oh, we don't want to scrape up this old can too much, do we? Of course we do. It needs to look as old as it is. And now that just slips through there. We put the knob on it and everything's off to the side of the can. All right, we're wrapping it up because we're putting the grease dirt in right there. Oh yeah. We always got to do this part. That's it. All right, let's have a look. And there's the downside. Our typical stuff, uh, except for that, we've got a, a way to put the uh, strap on. Floating bridge, bolts through, down to the neck, coil, matchbooks three strings and there's the headstock I'm going to plain field yeah don't you know yeah speaking of plain field this thing's straight out of plain field Jack I want to give a shout out to somebody in plain field Rosie, you know who you are. You're the one that's responsible for putting my first real guitar out on the map. So, thank you.
Well, let's see what this thing will do. Some coil. Doesn't that suck? If I had somebody could play this, it would be nice. Get your wallet out. 